Hello! Good to see y'all today. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I just got back. Um, my wife had to go, my real life wife, had to go straight from her work to um, basically just another kind of side job. So I ran and took her food, which she very much appreciated because um, she didn't have time to get any of her own, so she was feeling super hungry. I'm just going to pick up a couple of hyper potions while I'm sitting here at the Mart. Um, good to be back. Um, last time we played, we just defeated Blaine, which was pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, I just got us out of the gym and got the, t the team all healed. So, right now, we are sitting at seven badges, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, and we just have that mystery eighth badge to go get. But before we do that, we can do it now. But before we do that, um, we need to get a few levels on the squad. So I'm probably going to go out into the ocean here to the um, east and fight a few trainers. Definitely get uh, Jolteon up there because she'll have a nice type matchup. All right. Um... And we'll get Keith Angel going. Um, if you are just joining us for the first time, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm Trent. We're Silver Cave Gaming. Um, I'm just playing some of through some of my favorite games, and we're starting uh, off with Pokemon Yellow, uh, which I adore, um, and it's been an extremely fun time playing through this game in this context um, and just showing it off. Poliwag stands no chance to Jolteon's Thunderbolt. But uh, we can do a little team recap here at the top. Uh, once I go through this trainer here. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, not live, but later, I greatly appreciate that. Um, really happy to see some people checking out these streams over there. Um, so here we go. We have Eve the Jolteon, as you just saw, with that just powerful, powerful Thunderbolt. That'll probably be her main move as we go along. Now we have Keith Angel the Gyarados, such a good Pokemon in Generation 1. Been the powerhouse of our team this whole game. We've got Dragon Rage, Surf, Bite, and Ice Beam. Um, the newly learned Ice Beam, which will come in handy later. We have Boney the Marowak, one of my personal favorites, with Earthquake, Bone Club, Tail Whip, and Headbutt. Uh, we might teach Boney um, some kind of off-the-wall moves here, um, just for fun. Uh, so here we have Hitmonlee, Double Kick, Meditate, Strength, Rolling Kick. Titus, of course, starting to pull his weight. My beloved wife at level 38, uh, she just evolved, actually. She's got Razor Leaf, Mega Drain, Acid, and Sleep Powder. That is probably going to be her final move set. And then, of course, Copter the Aerodactyl, level 37, Wing Attack, Agility Fly, and Take Down. So let's continue through the sea here. Um, got a bunch of swimmers out here. Um, not too much more to say about that. They all have uh, some water-type Pokemon, so we're going to mow through them with Jolteon here. I'll probably bring Titus in just to get some levels on him as well. Um, this could be dangerous because Sea King could no peck, but it's not going to be that dangerous on my hit only. And I love that rolling kick because it has the chance to flinch. Hmm. Uh, so, how was everyone's day? Um, if you're watching this later, or if you're starting to tune in now, just let me know how your day was. Um, mine was alright. Uh... Job went pretty decently well. Um, we did have a kid get into some trouble, um, which made me kind of sad, but that's okay. Um, hopefully he can learn from it. Um, but otherwise, it's been good. I've been able to be pretty productive tonight. 
Um, like I said, my, my wife had to go straight to her job. I made dinner. I'm doing some laundry right now as well. Um, yeah, we'll bring in Titus again. Shelter, it would be great if Shelter was a... Yes, Shelter is not yet an ice type. Um, because Hitmonlee's fighting type moves would be super effective against an ice type. If she's got a Cloister, which she does, we're going to stay in. And even though Cloister has high defense, it does have a weakness to fighting moves. So Rolling Kick's going to do a decent amount. Oh, love to see Clamp miss. We're doing great, kids. But again, um, as you play through Pokemon Yellow, if y'all want to play on your own, I'm sure many people checking this out are very familiar with Pokemon Yellow. Um, but, you know, I want to be open to people who have never played this game before. Hopefully some younger people are um, discovering this stream in some way and can play Pokemon Yellow for the first time. Um, so if you play Pokemon Yellow for the first time yourself, I hear we have a really strong team. Like, this is a very good team. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try out Keith Angel's Ice Beam. Ooh, look at that. Mm, also super effective. Nice. Nice. Um, Pidgeotto. We'll go in a copter, because Pidgeotto won't really be able to hurt Aerodactyl, the rock type. Um, oh, but as I was saying, um, if you've never played this game before, the squad that we've got going on is very powerful. And if you decide to go kind of the route the game gives you, and use the starters that it gives you, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle, those are all three really powerful Pokemon. And when you play this game, you'll discover that that team can be really, really strong and very balanced, like ours is. And there, you might realize that you don't have to get your levels all the way up to par um, with some of the boss trainers that you'll be fighting. It'll help, but you have a lot of things going your way. You have type advantages over many things. You have potions you can use. Um, so I don't, I say all that to say, I don't want to get our levels too high um, because I've really enjoyed going into some of these gym fights. Sorry, I was kind of burping there. Um, going into some of these gym fights with, you know, a squad that's uh, been a little bit more of the underdog. Because um, we've still been able to pull out the win pretty pretty handily in most cases, um, and, sorry, I've really enjoyed that, because like, with uh, Koga, we had some fun, we had some fun times, Sabrina's Alakazam was a really cool challenge there in the last gym, or in the previous gym, even Blaine's Arcanine was giving us some trouble with that Fire Blast, um, because we are in the high 30s right now. Blaine's Arcanine was level 54, um, which is quite a bit higher than us. Um, and I know a lot of the levels of the bosses towards the end of the game are going to be more in that like 50s, 60 range. So here's an interesting spot. This, these are the Seafoam Islands. Now, I'm not gonna go in here right now, but uh, we might go in there later and kind of see what that's all about. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to check my bag because we might be able to do something kind of cool. Um, oh yeah, I can put away that secret key. So here we have TM38. It's for Fire Blast. We have a few Pokemon that can learn Fire Blast, actually. Um, <laughs> Keith Angel wouldn't be terrible. Um... But I want to see some stats. Um, because if Copter has a decent special stat, 62, it's not it's not good. <laughs> but uh, Boney, I was maybe going to teach it to Boney. It's better than Boney's 54. Um, I mean, Keith Angel would probably be able to make the best use of it, honestly. Um, 
And Keith Angel's moveset is just getting absurdly strong, especially if we teach him Fire Blast. I'll hold on to it. I want to see who's going to be the best Pokemon to learn Fire Blast. Um, but something we can do... I'm going to hop over here. Because we can't go any further that way. So I'm going to sell our Great Balls. And I'm going to buy some Ultra Balls. Sorry, it's not really letting me fast cycle through these. 20 Ultra Balls. So... Because I want to show you a little something. Mm, or maybe I don't want to show you a little something. I'm debating. Maybe not right now. We'll do it later. I bought the Ultra Balls anyway. Because in this game, the game doesn't really tell you. It gives you little hints here and there. But it doesn't really tell you there are actually three legendary Pokemon that you can catch before you fight the last bosses of the game. And the Seafoam Islands is where you find one of those Pokemon. And again, all you veterans are... I didn't know if there was a hidden item there. All you veterans are probably screaming at your screens right now. But ooh, we actually might be able to get a hint at one of them here, if I'm not mistaken. Look into the binoculars. A large, shining bird is flying toward the sea. Whoa! Look at that majestic beast. Oh, I love that sprite. Um, that is the legendary Pokemon that resides in Seafoam Islands. Um, and this is one of Professor Oak's aides. Um, if you've caught 50 kinds of Pokemon, I'm supposed to give you an EXP all. Something that... What that does is it gives experience to all of your Pokemon, no matter who's battling. Um, it's not very good in this game, and I haven't caught 50 kinds of Pokemon anyway. So I'm not really too worried about that. But uh, a couple of Oak's aids are kind of scattered about. Um, love that. So we are going to work our way through some of these trainers. Um, so really my plan here is we're probably going to get the squad to about level 38. And then we're going to see if we can take on the final gym. I am not messing around here, gang. I'm really not. Um, I know a lot of these people have some grass types, so we'll bring in Copter. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, tell me how your day was in the comments. Um, I'm excited to hear about it. I hope it was good. Like I said, mine was pretty solid. Pretty solid. I cannot complain. My job can be a real, uh, a real mixed bag, so I'm happy that it went pretty well today, <laughs> for the most part. Um... Um, let's see, what else? Um, uh, I saw my parents yesterday. Sorry, I just like froze for a second. Um, saw my parents yesterday. They were down in our neck of the woods, so we went and had dinner with them. Um, and that was really nice. I feel like I don't see my parents enough. Um, I just have a lot of things that I want to do, you know? I'm sure a lot of people can relate, especially my fellow adults out there. Um, where you're living on your own, you're married like I am. Where you're just doing your own thing, man. But it was really great. We went out to a nice Italian dinner. We are just huge Italian people, love pasta, my wife and I. Um, and we got ice cream afterwards, which was delightful and delicious. I don't know if y'all have Jenny's ice cream where you are from. Um, it's, there was, it was very big in LA too, where we lived. Um, it originated here, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, but it was big in LA. There were a couple Jenny's there. 
Um, they kind of have, like, more interesting flavors. Not, like, crazy, but, like, Brambleberry Crisp is a flavor <laughs> at Jenny's. Or, like, Powdered Jelly Donut. Not, like, anything insane. Not, like, you know, poop-flavored or anything. Um, or just, like, you know, weird, like, turmeric, dark chocolate pistachio I don't even know that probably sounds good to somebody um, but they have some funkier flavors <laughs> so we got that last night it's actually not real not my favorite ice cream in town I prefer there is a spot called graders that I really enjoy um, and I'm sure a lot of my fellow Columbus area people will feel the same um, yeah, Boney can only use Headbutt on this here Doduo because it's a flying type. Even though Doduo doesn't fly. Like, it, I feel like... I think in the anime, Doduo famously doesn't fly because you don't... Do you see wings on that thing? It's more of an ostrich. And I know that an ostrich has wings. You know what I'm saying. Um, but Doduo and Dodrio actually can learn fly. Fun fact. Um, and Charizard, originally, even though it's a big fire-breathing dragon with wings, it originally could not learn fly. Another fun fact. It can in this game. Um, in red and blue, it could not learn fly. Um, I really thought that would knock it out in one hit. But alas. Yeah, wing attack's just not too terribly strong in this game. ba dun da Ooh, bite! That's a good move. Um, I'm gonna get rid of takedown. I don't like takedown. I don't like that it does recoil damage. And bite can flinch the opponent, which is very good, especially if you are an Aerodactyl. That um, is really fast. Uh, but yeah, I prefer Graders to Jenny's. Ugh, Titus. Titus, my man, you've been struggle bussing for many streams. You're, you're way better now, but I just really wanted that one strength to knock out the Oddish. That would have been so lovely. There you go. Must be a range. Oh, yeah. I guess that's one thing I haven't really described um, since we started. In Pokemon, there is a thing um, known as a range where an attack does, like, it does a variable amount of damage. That variable isn't very large. It's probably just a couple HP either way, like more or less. Um, so when Hitmonlee hits the Oddish and the game calculates the damage, uh, the first Oddish, as you saw, it got like a lower roll, so it barely didn't knock out the Oddish. And by roll, I mean like, like the roll of a dice that indicates the random generation of the damage calculation. You know, I'm not explaining this very well. I'm sure there's people who uh, <laughs> can do it far better. Um, but I got, sorry, a low roll on that first Oddish, but I got a better roll on the second Oddish, so it actually knock it, knocked it out in one hit. Um, see one of the literally millions of videos on YouTube if you want a better explanation than that. <laughs> um. Look at Titus. Getting another status. Just collecting them, like a little collector. That's all right. He's level 38, trying to learn Jump Kick. Ah, Jump Kick is a powerful move, but I feel like I want to keep our current set. Um, because Meditate can come in handy because we can raise our attack. And Jump Kick, while it's pretty powerful, if you miss, you hurt yourself. And Hitmonlee actually learns another move later called High Jump Kick. Um, yeah, I'm gonna abandon Jump Kick for now. Um, that's actually like Jump Kick, but just more powerful. So, I'll probably wait to teach him only 
high jump kick rather than a regular old jump kick. Uh, but yeah, this is another uh, route that I talked about that's just to the east of the Kanto region here, um, where you have a lot of trainers to fight and get your team leveled up if you need. Um, it actually connects up to, if you remember, there's kind of like that maze of fences um, that we saw in a previous stream. Um, this route goes east and then north, and it connects to that. Um, so this goes all the way from Lavender Town here to Fuchsia City. Um, and if we go south of Fuchsia City, um, that will take us back to the ocean. And there are some more um, swimmer trainers over there if we really feel like we want to fight them um, south of Fuchsia City. And that will also lead us back to the Seafoam Islands there. It'll just take us to like a different entrance of the Seafoam Islands. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, Boney is just doing work. All right. Feeling pretty solid right now. Um, so, prepare to be amazed. For those of you who have played this game or know Pokemon at all, you're going to know this. And it's, it's telegraphed pretty hard. But uh, we're going to fly to Viridian City. But Trent. Why are we flying to Viridian City? We've been here already. Like at the beginning of the game, right? Yeah. But. We didn't stop at the gym they have at Viridian City. There is a gym in Viridian City. I. Yeah, I don't even think I had us stop over there to see what the deal was. But. When you first come to Viridian City, it uh, its gym is locked. Um, we don't need that secret key. We don't need in Blaine's gym anymore. Its gym is locked. But if we go up here now, well, there's that guy who was drunk off his butt. <laughs> Did the catching tutorial. This guy says Viridian Gym's leader returned. Interesting. But who is the leader? Well, we're going to find out. Uh, but first, we are going to fight the trainers in this gym. And there's a good handful of them. They're pretty powerful. Um, fun fact, once you fight all the trainers in here, or once you fight the trainers you need to, you can actually get straight to the gym leader without using any of the warp panels. Um, I know one of these guys has an Arbok, which is why I started with Boney. Oh, I'd love, love to see that. This Surf should knock out a Sand Slash in one shot, I would imagine. So our levels are actually pretty on par with the trainers in the gym, so I'm feeling pretty good. We got Doug Trio. We'll stay in. Um, Gyarados is actually a very good Pokemon for this gym, because not only does his water type hit ground type Pokemon for super effective damage like we see. Its flying type prevents uh, ground moves from hitting him, which is super great. And this gym, uh, these trainers have like a couple different kinds of Pokemon, but the main type of this gym is ground, which is very cool. Do, 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 do. Okay. Yeah, Rhyhorn usually goes down with just a drop of water or grass, but... Earthquake, while still super effective, it hits Rhyhorn against its more... Uh, its higher defense stat. Um, this is a... I don't remember who this guy is. I don't remember if he has fighting Pokemon or not. I'm working myself into a rage! Yeah, I would say the guy wearing a karate outfit has fighting Pokemon. Oh, is this the first appearance of my wife's final form? Look at that razor leaf! Watch out! Nice. Again, this move has a high critical hit... Ooh. Excuse me! Uh, this move has a high critical hit ratio, does razor leaf. Um, which is why we waited all the way to level 38 to evolve our wife. My wife. Hmm. 
But yeah, and while these guys don't have ground Pokemon, while this guy doesn't have a ground type Pokemon, he still has like fighting types, kind of like rough tumble Pokemon. It's kind of like themed in that way. And that's something that you'll see in some Pokemon games sometimes is that when the Pokedex of that region doesn't really have enough of like a specific type to kind of enough of a specific type for a specialized trainer to really use that type they will use Pokemon that kind of like fit the theme a little bit um, so to speak um, we're gonna open with Titus here I have no idea what this guy has we'll make wonderful music together is this the guy with the Arbok? Okay, good. It's Solar Eye Horn. And that Rolling Kick will still be nice and super effective against the Rock type. But again, hitting against the stronger defense stat. But we get the flinch. Rolling Kick is a move that can flinch, much like Bite or Headbutt. And as you can see, if they flinch, they just don't move. Um, so, there are a couple more trainers in here. We're gonna go this way. And it, ooh, I forgot about this guy. Um, the crack of my whip. Um, so if you recall, uh, the last time we saw, this guy has the Arbok. We'll stay in with him on Lee. Just don't get poison. It's that easy, just don't get poison. Love it. Um, the last time we saw the warp panels like that, that kind of like shot us in a specific direction, we were in, ooh, this is a great matchup for Titus. Fighting is the only offensive advantage against a normal type Pokemon like Tauros. Um, okay. Tauros is very strong in this game. Oh, it must be a speed type. But the last time we saw warp panels like this were in Team Rocket's hideout in Celadon City, which is very interesting. I wonder why that is. We might find out here in a minute. Da -da -da -da. Yes, I think this guy's got fighting types as well. Karate, yes. Do, 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 do. So we got Copter, our beautiful flying type moves. Nice crit. Love to see it. Do, 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 do. Um, ah oh yes, yeah, so we'll fight this trainer. Da -da -da -da. I don't think, yeah, we have not fought him yet. I think we are close to fighting all the trainers in the gym here. Ah yes, Nidorino. One thing I love about this gym is that it really features, um, Nidoran, the male Nidoran that evolves into the Nidorino, and the female Nidoran that evolves into Nidorina, which is super clever, of course. Um, because they are one of the first Pokemon you can get in the game. But they also become quite powerful, as we're going to see here. Um, we're going to go into Bony for this one. Look at that sprite! <sighs> Great sprite. Oh, I love the sprites in this game. Nidoran male evolves into Nido King. We've seen we've seen Nido Queen uh, because the old Rocket uh, leader Giovanni has a, had a Nido Queen in our last fight with him at Self Company. But I love how Nidoran's one of the first Pokemon you can get in the game, and the last gym, which is in the first town, like heavily features it. It's really cool. It kind of shows kind of like the growth and progression of that line of Pokemon. Um, there might be one more guy over here. Yes, there is. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm going to fight you with my Aerodactyl. Yeah, I usually like to wipe out most of the trainers in the gyms. I think I skipped maybe one or two in Blaine's, but it's whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, the Machop, Machoke line, they have pretty good defense as well. Even though that fly is super effective from a very powerful Pokemon. 
that high defense still made it so that it didn't just didn't kill it. Wow, they really like to use X attack in this gym. Now, that would be smart if they weren't like almost guaranteed to die by using it. So that's not very smart. If using it guarantees that you die, that's not very smart. Um, so that's a lesson for you kids. We're gonna go into Eve here because Eve's probably not gonna get a lot of play in the gym, in the final gym battle. Uh, but she'll knock out this Machoke. All right. So with that, what I'm gonna do, oop, sorry, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna speed up a little bit. I'm actually gonna exit the gym. Um, I'm not gonna heal, because Titus is our only Pokemon that has any damage on him right now. Um, we're gonna open with Keith Angel. Dude, actually, I'm gonna open with my wife, my beautiful wife. So as you can see, when we go in here, you actually don't have to end up using any of the warp panels. You can just go around, you can go this guy. You see, the first time you go into the gym, this guy will like walk down and block your path. But when you leave, after you fought him, you can just walk right here and go over here. But Trent, who's the gym leader? <gasps> it's Giovanni. It was him the whole time. The leader of Team Rocket. Crazy. I mean, they telegraph it a little bit. <laughs> um, but uh, it's it's a pretty cool twist, honestly. Um, it's kind of just very known information now. But, you know, if you were playing this and you didn't know that, that's a pretty sick twist. That, like, the final gym leader is actually the bad guy the whole time. Um, I don't remember if I save, so I'm going to save one more time. So let's see what Giovanni has to say before we bring him to his knees. All right. Fwahaha! This is my hideout. I planned to resurrect Team Rocket here. But you have caught me again. So be it. This time, I'm not holding back. Once more, you shall face Giovanni, the greatest trainer. Oh, wow. This is going to be the last time we get this killer gym leader music. So let's enjoy it. Thank you. Giovanni's got a Doug Trio. Doug Trio is a very fast, very powerful Pokemon. In fact, I'm gonna anticipate getting hit by this Doug Trio, so I'm gonna use a Mega Drain. Ah, it just used a Sand Attack and it didn't even work. Lucky me. Doug Trio, while very fast and very strong. Ooh, dig, okay. Um, that's fine, I'm definitely gonna get hit by this dig. Oh, and it's super effective. I forgot. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Great. Um, but Doug Trio, while very fast and very strong, is not very bulky. It can't take too many hits. But, unfortunately, my main gal will get destroyed with another dig. Oh, wow. Okay, he was just going to use a guard spec anyway. And this dig won't even hit because Copter's a flying type. Excuse me. But yeah, I explained way back, Dig has 100 power, much like Earthquake does, um, which is very strong. But Earthquake doesn't need that extra turn to go down underground. Okay, about to use Persian. So in the anime, this is a big thing because Jesse and James have a Meowth, right? And Giovanni has a Persian in the anime, which is the evolved form of Meowth. And... It's always like, you know, Jesse and James and Meowth are kind of like ne'er-do-wells, terrible. Um, if this doesn't kill... Oh! Titus! Finally pulling your weight, dude! That was a clutch critical hit. We would have definitely died without it. Um, Nidoqueen. Here is where my boy Keith Angel is probably going to shine. However... Yes, I think, we, I think we'll be fine. Um, because I believe... His Nido King knows Thunder, which is bad news. 
um, for Gyarados, because Gyarados is twice super effective to Thunder. Oh yeah, so Giovanni has a Persian, and it's always just like Meowth feels inferior to Giovanni's Persian, and Jesse and James always want to like please the boss. Um, it's just a fun little thing, you know. Um, excellent, Keith Angel. Good to see it. Keep up the good work. Okay, Nido King. This is what I described. This is probably why he's bringing in Nido King, so it can use Thunder on my dear Gyarados here. Again, level 55. We are like six. We're 16 levels below it. We are way below the levels right now. Um. And yeah, so now Nido King doesn't have a ton of things to hit my boy Boney with, so it just used a weak double kick. And that's what I'm saying. You don't really need to get your Pokemon like super all the way up level wise. Um, and I know a lot of people do challenge runs of these games where they have just oh okay, I spoke too soon, but I think this will still knock it out. Um, where they can just use a weak Pokemon and just kind of solo the game with it. Um, Alright. Excellent job, Bony. For Rhydon, you know what it is. The evolved form of Rhyhorn, what did I say? All you need is a grass move or a water move. So we're gonna let, let my wife do it. We're gonna let my wife do the honors. This should kill it. Oh no. Yeah, Mega Drain's not very strong. They didn't make it very strong because if they did, that's kind of like a really overpowered move to heal you, even though it just healed us back to full. Miss Fury Attack. This is my wife we're talking about here. Yeah. She can't be beat. That's really all it is. Powerhouse. So we defeat Giovanni. Um, he has a really cool team. Um, I really love his team in this game. Um, and, like, Rhydon is his main Pokemon, but it's really easy to counter, which I always hate. Um, I mean, if you really want to challenge yourself and not use a Pokemon that's super effective against it, and then it's, like, a real challenge. Um, ha! That was truly an intense fight. You have won! As proof, here is the Earth Badge. Which is the final badge. Earth Badge makes Pokemon of any level obey. It is evidence of your mastery as a Pokemon trainer. With it, you can enter the Pokemon League. It is my gift for your Pokemon League challenge. Ash received TM27. This is Fissure. So we have Earthquake, which does 100 damage. And this is Fissure. It is like Earthquake. It will take out Pokemon with just one hit. I made it when I ran the gym here too long ago. Ugh. They redeemed Giovanni a little bit here. They're just like, oh, he used to just be a normal Pokemon trainer. He used to be good. What happened? What happened along the way? Who hurt you, Giovanni? Anyway, Fisher has a very low chance of hitting, but it um, will literally always uh, defeat a Pokemon in one hit. That's like the trade-off. It has like a 30% chance of hitting. Um, but when you talk to Giovanni again here... Having lost, I cannot face my underlings. Team Rocket is finished forever. I will dedicate my life to the study of Pokemon. Let us meet again someday. Farewell. And then he leaves. Never be seen again. How about that? All the work of a 10-year-old boy. And I only say a boy because the limitations of the Game Boy were so great that they could only have one kind of character and you could not customize it so it's always a boy. Um, I think the, the first time that you can customize it, I don't think you can in Gold and Silver, the original Generation 2 games, but you can in Crystal, which is the, the yellow of Generation 2, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so, with that, we can actually go this way. Uh, if you recall, we fight, we fought our rival over here. 
And going this way, we can actually go to the Pokemon League. Because if you look here, well, let's do a quick, hit a quick save here. If you look here, we've got all eight badges. Nice. So once you have all eight badges, you can go to the Pokemon League and you can challenge the Elite Four, the Elite Four trainers. Those trainers are Lorelei, Bruno, Agatha, and Lance. Um, and I'll, I'll save what they use for when we fight them. But um, now we can go there. So we can make our way now. Let me go up here. And if you remember, we fought our rival here. And wait, what? He's here again? Oh no! Um, so we get a nice little rival fight here. Um, he's gonna be pretty strong. We should be able to win, but, uh, let's have a look-see. Oh, excuse me again. As you can see, his levels are a little weaker than Giovanni's. Ah, oh, the critical hit barely misses. Barely misses the one shot. But acid will do the trick. My wife is no joke. And again, the Pokemon that your rival in this has in this game are very, very different than your rival, like, canonically has. Um, for the rest of the franchise, honestly. Like, this character that's known as Blue. Um, because basically, no matter what you name your rival or yourself... The player character of Generation 1 is kind of like canonically known as Red, and the rival character is canonically known as Blue. You know, opposites and also what the um, versions were called in English. It was actually Red and Green in Japan, but Red and Blue in good old English, which is what I speak. I am actually trying to learn Japanese. Um, which I think is a pretty exciting proposition. Um, it's very hard. <laughs> um, I, I have been doing it. I have, I do it just a little bit a day. I do Duolingo, if y'all are familiar. Um, but I have done it for almost 350 days. So I'm closing in on a year as my streak. Um, and I still, I mean, you still know so little, so little. Um, but, uh, I guess I could say, uh, just Gameu Gasuki Des. I like video games. Which I do. That's why we're here. Oh, yes. Clamp is another move like, um, like fire spin or bind um but it's actually a bit more powerful and it's a water type move it's not just a regular old normal type move Ooh, go into good old copter for the cadabra um i'm glad he doesn't have an alakazam like sabrina and again he's using the old oh nice critical hit so what happened there was the cadaver used reflect to raise its defense but if you get a critical hit, that does not account for um, those bonuses. So it kind of like hit through the defense rays. So our rival has a Jolteon just like we do. And I don't know if I've explained this, but your rival will have a different version, different evolution of Eevee, um, depending on what happens earlier in the game. Because so, the two fights that you have with your rival early in the game, great crit, by the way. Um, if you split those fights, your rival will actually have a Flareon, which is the fire type. If you win both of those fights, which is what we did, I'm almost positive, um, he will have a Jolteon. Um, and if you lose both of those fights, he will actually have a Vaporeon, which is the water type evolution. Um, so what I want to do here, I don't want to go to the Pokemon League quite yet. We're kind of getting toward the end of our stream time here that I like to keep it 
I actually want to go to Cerulean City for a reason I will explain in just a little bit. And since I can't fly out there, I need to bring back our friend, our good friend, Biddlebug, because we need to use Cut. Um, uh, for now, we can just put my wife in the PC. We'll let her have like a little rest. I'll definitely bring her back. Do not worry. My wife is my wife is eternal. Till death do us part. Um, so here, forgive me, I'm going to speed up a little bit to kind of get us to where I want us to go. Um, because if you recall, we came out this way. Oh yeah, we can use Dig too. On Biddlebug. We came out this way to get to Rock Tunnel. Rock Tunnel was the cave that we had to traverse to get to Lavender Town. Um, and... It was dark in there, and we used the HM Flash. But here, what's going to happen is we're actually going to surf down this little river, which was not available to, available to us before. Um, so as we go down here, we pass the Pokemon Center, and Rock Tunnel is right there to the left. But now there's a new area. What's going on here? So, oh yeah, there's a trainer right here. How about that? I'll fight him real quick. He's a Pokemaniac. Ugh, my wife would come in handy right now. That's okay. Keith Angel will do the trick as well. Sorry, kind of speeding through this. I kind of forgot that this guy was down here. Um, a Lickitung. Ah, yes. I don't know if we've seen a Lickitung. Lickitung is a very weird normal type Pokemon. Um, with a big old tongue and a very uncomfortable demeanor. Now, he's not that strong, though. Hitmonlee will hit right through him. So what we're going to try is here, there is a building. A very big, mysterious building down here. Power plant. What could this be about? Then it kind of has, like, the dungeon music. Um... This place has these, like, weird little rocks here. It's, it kind of reminds me of the... Uh, Carbos, yes. There's a lot of good items in here. So this is kind of like a hidden little dungeon. There's not a ton to it, but... Um, as you can see, it'll be a very important place for us. Ah, yes. And this is one of the cool things about Voltorb and Electrode. Um is that items in this power plant, you can run into a highly leveled Voltorb or Electro, um, which is really neat. And I know some of these places are dead ends. Some of them lead to uh, static Voltorb like this. I love in the old Pokemon games how you can find Pokemon like in the over overworld like that and like Snorlax, which is really cool. TM33, what is TM33? Oh yeah, I forgot to... I'll use a Carbos real quick. Um, who needs a little more speed? How about Titus? I might be favoring Titus with those. TM33 is... Ah, Reflect! That could come in handy. I don't know if we'll end up using it, but it could come in handy. It's what the Execute was... Or the Execute and Kadabra were using. Um... So if you're playing through yellow and you want to get yourself a really powerful electric type, you can maybe save your Thunderbolt TM. Um, as soon as you get Surf and beat Koga, you can come down here and snag yourself a Voltorb. Um, because in one level, it'll, it'll evolve and you'll have yourself... Because these level 40 Voltorb are higher level than any of our Pokemon. Or I think they're on par with um, our Marowak at this point. Um... But I know TM25, I'll look up what that is. This is probably a Voltorb, and it is. You see, for me, we're just going to run from these Voltorb because they're not really what we're here for right now. And we already have a powerful electric type, Jolteon, and we already taught her Thunderbolt, so we're not really looking for a Voltorb right now. Many people will try to catch all the Pokemon, which is 
kind of, was kind of like the original thought with Pokemon. Um, I can't remember if that area with all those Pokeballs down there are a place that we've been yet. Ah, Rare Candy. I believe we have eight Rare Candies at this point. Um, ooh, an HP up. Very good. Forgive me if I skip that area. I'm just checking because I want to make sure I grab all the items. Because um, there have been some really good items in here. Ah, yes, Magneton. Um, so in here, you'll find, um, just on the ground here, you'll find Voltorb, you'll find Magneton, um, you'll find Magnemite. Um, so we're getting to the point here where it looks like the highest level that we're going to run into is, Mag is 38. So I'm going to switch to Copter, so... We should not run into those Pokemon now with our repels up. Um, ah, yes, here is this. Ooh, Electrode at level 43. Ooh, wow. Aerodactyl can't even escape. Electrode is one of the fastest Pokemon in the game. Um, oh, a nice hidden item. I was just... I was just seeing um, okay, so let's use this HP up. Actually, I want to see what TM25 is. Thunder! That is the most powerful electric move in the game. We could teach it to our girl Eve or Keith Angel. Jeez, Keith Angel just learns everything. He's so strong. It's insane how strong he is. Um, but, uh, and he has the stats to use it. We might use that HP up on our wife, so I'm going to wait a little bit. But the whole reason we came here was for one reason only. I wanted to show you a little something. Because I said that Arcticuno is at the Seafoam Islands, and Arcticuno is a um, ice and flying type. Arcticuno has two siblings, Zapdos and Moltres. And here at the power plant, we can encounter Zapdos. The electric bird. Look at that sprite. Level 50. We're not going to use Zapdos. Because we don't need to. He's super powerful. He's a legendary He's a legendary Pokemon. Um, so I don't know... Okay, we can paralyze electric types in this game. In other games, you can't paralyze an electric type. So that's what we're going to do to start. To kind of weaken him, make him a little slower. That was a critical hit. It's very powerful. Um, and we're going to try to weaken him down. Oh, super effective still. Okay, cool. That was a critical hit, so we know we're not going to kill him with another Thunderbolt. We definitely don't want to knock him out because we're trying to catch him. Um, one more Thunderbolt should do the trick, implying... Okay, it killed us, so we're going to have to go back to the drawing board here. Let's go into Titus. I'm going to use a Strength, because remember, we're trying not to knock out Zapdos. Okay, great. Um... Something that I might do, this double kick is not going to be very effective, as you can see, and it should leave just a sliver. Perfect. Our Zapdos is in a really good place. This will definitely knock out Hitmonlee, though. Um, so I'm actually really happy with where Zapdos is, kind of like health-wise. It has a status affliction, and it's all the way down to the red. And that's going to be the best spot for us to catch it. Now, the Master Ball would catch it no matter what, but I want to save that for something. So we're going to see if we can use an Ultra Ball. And something that you will encounter in this game, in only the Generation 1 games, is sometimes your Pokeballs can miss. Um, so I'm going to kind of speed through this a little bit. Um, because sometimes you can just get, like, crap luck and not really be able to um, catch it, and, like, none of your balls even hit the Pokemon you're trying to catch like what's happening with us right now. Um, I do really want to see one ball capture this Zapdos. Um, but if not, that's not a big deal. We can maybe try again in the next stream. And it can be very frustrating, as you're seeing, because I've done pretty much everything right. Um... And I, I guess it is kind of a glitch, 
Um, and Ultra Ball is the best Pokeball besides the Master Ball in the game. And this might kill us. Okay, we have probably one more shot. Alas. Well, it looks like the Zapdos knocked us out. So what happens when you get knocked out in one of these games? You know what? I'll actually show you. Because it wasn't really that important that we caught Zapdos. I just wanted to show him to you. So I'll show you what happens when you get knocked out in, this, in these games. It'll say, you're out of usable Pokemon, Ash blacked out. And then you kind of just get sent back to the last uh, Pokemon Center you went to. Also in this game, it takes away some of your money. Um, it might be half of your money. So that might have been a bad call by me, but it's okay. We're going to be fine. Um, but I really wanted to show that to you. For those of you who've never played before. But... With Zapdos killing us on a technicality, because none of our balls could hit him, um, we will end tonight's stream. Um, next time, we will head to the Pokemon League. Later, I might show you where the other legendary birds are. We'll see. Um, but yeah, next stream, we'll head to the Pokemon League. Um, it's going to be awesome. I can show you Victory Road, which is one of the, um, probably like the biggest dungeon in the game. Um which happens right before the Pokemon League. And we might even be able to beat the game next stream. It is uh, maybe two more streams, because probably one more to get, get to the Pokemon League and then another one to uh, defeat it. So we're actually coming up towards the end here, gang. I have had so much fun playing this game. Just a couple more streams left. Um, and with that, I hope you all have a lovely night. Thank you for watching this, whether you're watching it now or later on YouTube. Um, you're wonderful. Um, like and subscribe, I guess. And I will see you all next time. Peace.